Okay, so here's uh, the next screencast on the product rule and extending into the quotient rule with some specific examples. So what you're going to see here every time is I have a, an organizer that I use for the product rule and the quotient rule. I use the same organizer. Um, and there's our rule right there circled in red. Okay, dy by dx or y prime is a prime, the derivative of the first function, multiplied by the second function, b, plus the first function a multiplied by the derivative of the second function. And in the previous screencast, we went through the development of that rule. So what I always do is I write down what a is, and I write down what b is, or sorry, I denote what a and b are, and then you'll notice the organizer I use is written, it's organized for the actual rule, right? So here you see a prime and b, well that's the first part of the product rule, okay? And then this part here is a, b prime, a, b prime. You will see it written differently in most circumstances. I, write, I do this for very specific reasons in terms of organization and factoring afterwards. Most people write it as a prime b plus b prime a, right, which is fine, but um, I like to have things in the same position. So if I've got like, say, a is e to the x, and I know the derivative is a, e to the x, my e to the x's will come first always. Then it makes it easier when you have to do things like common factoring. Okay, so here we go. Example one. So what we've got here, a prime, or sorry, start, the boxes get filled in first, right? You can't fill in a prime until you know what a is. So a is x. That means a prime, the derivative is one. The tangent slope of x is one. Then I go over to b, I go up here to b, and b is e to the x. And we know that derivative or the tangent slope of b for b of b prime, the tangent slope of b, which is b prime, is e to the x. Okay? So now what do I do? I put it into the formula and in the exact same order. Okay, the exact same order. So I start a prime multiplied by b. So it's 1 multiplied by e to the x. Don't put the 1 in, just leave it out actually, okay? Well, for now, let's actually, let's start. So 1 times by e to the x plus, and then it's a b prime, right? a b prime, which is right here, a b prime. So it's plus x e to the x, okay? x e to the x. All right, so um, we do that, and then... In the last step, that's the product rule done. The calculus is finished now. All we need to do now is common factor where possible. And this common factoring is really critical when it comes to horizontal tangents, which is where we find our maximums and minimums. Okay, so if I'm gonna common factor here, I'm gonna circle the common factor. So e to the x and e to the x are the common factors. So I'll write that as e to the x is the common factor. And then what are we left with? Well. After I move e to the x from the first term, I have one left, plus sign, x, okay, and I'm done. And that, folks, is the simplified derivative. What's really easy to see is e to the x is never zero, right? Because we know e to the x looks like that, right? It can never be zero. No matter how many times you multiply or divide e, you're never going to get zero. But 1 plus x can be 0 when x equals negative 1. Okay, so by getting the x-intercept of this, I've made dy by dx 0. If dy by dx is 0, I've got a horizontal tangent, right? The slope is only 0 at places like that. Okay, it, maximum, minimum, and there's one other thing that we're going to discuss. Okay, so it's really important to factor because that way you can figure out where the maximums or minimums are. Sometimes you won't be able to factor, but if you can, you should. Okay, let's try number two. X squared, that should just be X squared. I'm not sure what that is up there. Oh, that's just a pen mark, okay. So X squared times four to the X. What have I got here? That's A, that's B. So I write um, A first, that's X squared. I can then write A prime above it, two X. Then I go over to B, B is four to the X, and you should have your formula sheet out for this, right, to look, or some of your questions. I gave you the formula sheet, but you also have a list of all the derivative rules. The derivative of 4 to the x is ln 4 multiplied by 4 to the x. Okay, ln 4 times 4 to the x. 
So now that I've got that, I can now go into my formula, okay? And again, it comes across the rows. Look at that, I've got that right there is that part. This right here is this part. Okay, so um, A prime B is, um, is going to be 2x and B prime is 4 to the x. Then I've got um, A, which is x squared multiplied by B prime, which is ln 4 multiplied by 4 to the x. And now we've got more than one common factor, actually. x is a common factor. 4 to the x is a common factor. x is a common factor. 4 to the x is a common factor. So now I've got two common factors. x multiplied by 4 to the x. And remember what common factoring means. It means you're dividing. Okay, so what am I dividing? So what am I, what's going to be left over? So in this first term right here, I have to divide out that 4 to the x because of that 4 to the x, and I have to divide out that x because of that x. What am I left with? 2. Then I have a plus sign with no negatives there or there. So plus, and then what's left over here? Well, if I remove x from x squared by factoring, that means division, x squared divided by x is x, so I get x, and then what else do I get? Ln 4 is left over. So I can write x, ln 4, okay? So remember, that's a little bit, to me, that's a little bit of a weird way to write it because that's like writing x and then like, that's just a number, right? Like 2. So it's like x times 2. I'm okay with that. Most people are okay with that, just as long as you remember. Um, and then this one could also be solved, right? There's going to be a solution there. X is going to be negative 2 divided by ln 4. That's going to be the maximum or minimum. All right, then we go to the third example. Now we've got some trig. Okay, now we've got some trig. And um, you know what? Actually, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to do, um, instead of that, maybe I'll do ln x. You know what? I'm going to change that and make it ln x ln x times by, well, that's hard to see, isn't it? So what I'll do is I'm going to write it this way. Um, I'll do cos x multiplied by ln of x, right? I didn't do an example with ln, and I probably should. So um, in this case, what's a? I'll do this in red. What's a? a is cos x. b is ln x. So the a is cos x. The b is ln x, and what's a prime? Well, the, the tangent slope function or derivative function for cos x is negative sine x, and the tangent slope function for ln x is 1 over x. Okay, now I put it into the rule. Okay, now I put it into the rule. So the top row here has everything I need, so it's going to be negative sine x, multiplied by b, which is ln x. Then I've got a, which is cos x, multiplied by 1 over x. Okay, multiplied by 1 over x. All right, so um, now we have that. And is there any factoring I can do there? I don't think so. I don't see any common factors, right? So what I probably need to do in the last step is to drop those brackets, and I'm going to have negative sine x multiplied by ln x plus, and here's what you should do. Remember, cos x is being multiplied by 1 over x. That means cos x, um, so multiplying by 1 over x is the same as, oh, well, think about it this way. If you multiply by 1 third, that's the same as, division by 3, right? Multiplication by 1 third is the same as division by 3. So multiplication by 1 over x is the same thing as division by x. So we should write that this way, cos x over x, and you'd be done. Okay, folks, so um, that's, that's the way you proceed with these. Um, now this one here, you, there's no way for you to find out where the maximum or minimum is because there's just no way to solve that equation. All right, so we're just going to turn um, for a moment, and we're going to do a single quotient rule example. OK, 
okay, a single quotient rule example. So a quotient rule, as you can imagine, are just, it's just when you divide fractions, right? Or when you divide uh, functions, right? So you have f of x, which I call, make it simple, call it the top. g of x is the bottom. Now, we can prove the rule from the product rule, but we can't do that until we learn something called the chain rule. And we don't really have the chain rule down yet, so um, the quotient rule is something we'll prove a little bit later. Okay, so uh, the formula, as you can see, is very, 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 very similar to the product rule. If you remember, the product rule was a prime b plus a b prime. Well, it's pretty similar, right? Take a look at this. So, a prime top prime, b b. Um, oh, plus becomes a minus, a t b prime b prime. Okay, um, and b in this it, b doesn't mean bottom, by the way, in the product rule, it's just first and second. Um, so again, top prime bottom minus top bottom prime. Most people will write top prime bottom minus um, bottom prime top. The, um, different people have different names. There's one called high d low minus low d high and divided by low squared or something. There's all kinds of things. I can never remember them. Um, I just have the formula and sort of remember it that way. Okay, so the process is exactly the same. Okay, exactly the same. I start, I would put a box around the top and the bottom, recognizing those are my original parts of the function, right? So that makes this the top, e to the x is then the bottom, right? And I just go through and I, um, and, and I, I work through and I get my um, function. Oh, so I'm going to make, I'm going to be um, bad again and I'm going to make this e to the negative x, okay? e to the negative x. So um, what is the top? The top is cos x. Okay. Um, and what's the derivative of cos x? Negative sin x. What is the bottom? The bottom is e to the negative x. What is the bottom prime? If we remember, uh, d by dx e to the kx equals k e to the kx. So the derivative is then, um, the derivative is negative e to the negative x. Okay, and now we put it into the formula. Okay, put it into the formula. And I'll show the formula over here. So if y equals top over bottom, y prime equals top prime bottom minus top bottom prime all over the bottom squared. Okay, so now we're going to put that into the formula. So start with the top prime. That's cos x. Okay, that's right here. Then I multiply, oh, whoa, 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 top prime. Top prime is, sorry, negative sine x. And then it's going to be multiplied by, I should keep things in brackets initially, multiplied by the bottom. The bottom is e to the negative x, minus sine. Okay, that's one of the things that changes, right? It's a minus sign. And then we have to get top multiplied by bottom prime, okay? Top multiplied by bottom prime. Again, we go across, multiply across. And then so it's top cos x multiplied by the bottom prime, which is, the bottom prime is negative e to the negative x, okay? Negative e to the negative x. That's all divided by the bottom squared. The bottom is negative e to the negative x, or sorry, e to the negative x. Here's how I'm going to write squaring, though. Anytime I have anything with e, actually, even if you don't, I, I, it's a good idea to do this initially. Just write it twice. Okay, that's the same as squaring, right? Like 3 squared equals 3 times 3. I can still write it that way. And then there's something that you can do, right? So if you had up here 2 times 4 plus 3 times 4, all over 4 times 4, you could divide out 4 from the top and the bottom, and you'd be left with 2 plus 3 over 4, right? 
Well, that makes your equation a lot simpler. And again, I, you don't see, I, I did something I observed that made things easier over the years. So if you look, what can I divide out then? I can only divide out if, as long as all, term can be divi all terms can be divided out. So then what I'm going to do is I've got e to the x there. I can divide that out with that. And then that still would have divided out with that first one, right? So now what's left over? Okay, what's left over is my final one. So y prime is going to equal negative sine x. And then here I've got a negative negative. So that becomes plus cos x all divided by e to the negative x. And in fact, this one here, I can get the x-intercept for that, right? That can be zero, right? Horizontal tangent. The solution to that, by the way, is 10x equals 1, pi by 4 and pi by 4 and 3, 5 pi by 4, I guess. Okay, so think about how we did that in um, advanced functions. Okay, so that's an, that's, those are examples with the um, quotient rule and the product rule. Okay, and so now you'll just be doing a bunch of practice. Um, and you'll have the answers. Um, you won't have the fact, fully factored answer at first, but please, please, please try to do that. Okay, folks? Um, and uh, best of luck on doing your homework.